Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article is about Assam gas leak. There is a natural gas producing well of the Oil India Limited in Tinsekia district of Eastern Assam. This had a blowout on May 27th and has been leaking gas and has even caught fire recently. What are we discussing under this article? We will focus on why did the leak happen? What will be the impact on the environment? And what are the steps taken by the government? First up, let's look at the location. This oil field is present in Thin Sekia district of the Assam state. This is close by to the Brusoikovo National Park. The first important factor from your preliminary examination point of view that this is close to the Dibrusaikova National Park which is in the state of Assam. So kindly remember this key important factor. Now let's understand what is the blowout as given under this article. A blowout is nothing but uncontrollable release of crude oil or the natural gas from the oil well or from the gas well. Why? Because the pressure control systems have failed. Because the pressure control systems have failed, this has led to uncontrolled release of crude oil as well as natural gas. So whenever there has been an apparatus which has the control system which is controlling the flow of the pressure and when that fails, it leads to what is called as blot. A blot is nothing but uncontrollable release of crude oil or the natural gas. Currently, what we have to understand is why do the blowouts happen? As we initially discussed, whenever there has been a failure of the pressure control system it results in what is called as blowout this is one of the possible reasons the other reasons could also be lack of attention by the personnel poor workmanship bad maintenance and old age of the equipment because of all these possible reasons there could be a possibility of blowout as well now what we have to understand is what led to the leak in the present scenario there is a device called as the blowout preventer and that is installed in the well as we all know any equipment for that matter will require periodic servicing it will also require repairing once in a while why because there is wear and tear of this equipment in the present scenario these equipments were being serviced and the blowout preventer was also removed for servicing since they were in the process of repairing the wellhead in the present scenario suddenly all of a sudden the gas started to ooze out of this exposed well before anyone could understand what is the issue what was the failure in the present scenario the gas started oozing out and eventually it had caught fire as well now the thing is whenever there has been a scenario of this particular blowout what we have to realize is that this could create a catastrophe in this region so immediately what we have to ensure is maximum supply of water maximum Maximum water has to be pumped so that gas does not catch fire. What could be the impact on the environment? The gas field is very close to the Bru Saikova National Park and as a result of this it has caused extensive damage to the biodiversity and wildlife in the region. Variety of fishes and endangered gangetic dolphin have also died. The paddy fields, the ponds and wetlands in the adjoining villages have also been contaminated and this could result in loss to the agricultural farmers as well. Several small tea growers have also been impacted and they have also been complaining about layers of gas that has been condensed due to this particular issue. And at the same time, there have been people who have been evacuated and placed in relief camps. Local people have also complained about burning ice as well as headache in the present scenario. Because of all these issues, the government had to step up and it has taken some preventive measures as well. So what are the measures taken by the government? To prevent fire, the Oil India Limited has been spraying water continuously so that it does not spread to the adjacent fields. The National Disaster Response Force has also been deployed in the area since the time of gas leak and top officials of Assam are also reviewing the situation both with respect to the loss as well as with respect to the environment as well. The, the Indian Air Force and Army are assisting in the firefighting operations. The Air Force has sent about three fire engines and the Army has 
has also been reached to prevent any kind of adversities as well. Experts from Singapore have also been called in for assistance in case of any eventuality. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article says India China agree to a standoff. Armies of India and China had engaged in aggressive posturing in Ladakh region. The armed forces of both the countries now have begun to partially disengage from points along the line control. So both the armies have had the conversation and they now want to retract their army along the line of actual control. Let's look at some of the key important developments with respect to the Ladakh region. India and China discuss de-escalation plan on five conflict points. Where are those? One is in Galvin area, the Pangongso as well as Chusul. So according to this disengagement plan, China happened to remove its troops, happened to remove the tents as well as its vehicles in the Galvin area. The same was reciprocated back by India. The minute there is line of control, China started moving back to its territory. India also reciprocated and also removed its troops as well. As of now, this is happening in the Galvin area. But there are other areas as well. One is with respect to the Chusul. The other is with respect to the Pangong Show. These areas are where the troops are still housed and they will also have to withdraw in the near future. So what could be the possibility of talks in the near future? One is that both the countries will engage both on the diplomatic levels and also on the military levels so that they can bring the status quo with respect to India and China in the Ladakh region as the position before May 5th. Then they will also ask the PLA troops from both these areas to go back to the original area and ultimately multiple other equipments which are currently present on the Chinese side of the line of actual control will also have to be withdrawn is what this article all about. We will have an elaborate analysis of this particular issue once every single issue settles. Now let's look into the next article. This article here is speaking about crisis that is unfolding in the national capital region Delhi. What is the issue? There has been spiraling number of COVID-19 cases every single day and the government is not able to take care of the COVID-19 patients. This is where the Chief Minister of Delhi came up with a notification. He said only those permanent citizens who are part of Delhi, who have been residing in Delhi and have all legitimate documents that they are residents of Delhi, only such people will be provided healthcare services in the state run as well as the private hospital in Delhi. In order to prove that you are the bona fide resident of the national capital region of Delhi, you have to put out certain documents. It can be voter ID, it can be the bank passbook, it can be the ration card, it can also be driving license, passport, latest water or telephone or electricity or gas connection bill. If you are able to show these documents, only then COVID-19 infection people will be treated in Delhi. But there are some exceptions as well. According to the government order, treatment relating to oncology, transplantation, neurosurgery and in case they have met with road accidents or acid attack, such people have the exceptions. So those people who have been impacted by all these issues, anyone can get admitted and they can have the healthcare services. But if it is COVID-19, they have to be the resident of Delhi. This was a notification released by the Delhi government. Now, the Lieutenant Governor Anil Baijal has issued an order overruling the decision. The same has been explained in our yesterday CNA, but there are some arguments which we have to focus on. Article 21 is an important fundamental right. It speaks about right to life. In right to life, one of the ingredient aspect is also right to health. So every person will have to be provided the right to health as well. When you are not providing this right to health to other people, it means that they are being violated of their fundamental rights under Article 21. This is what the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi speaks about. He further says that denying healthcare to someone on the grounds of residency is quite insensitive and irresponsible act of the government of Delhi. It is the responsibility of the state to provide universal health care to all the patients irrespective of where they come from and in case this is not being provided, there is violation of the fundamental right under Article 14 as well. Article 14 speaks about right to equality. In case you are differentiating people, whether they are residents or they are not residents, it means that you are categorizing people 
and there is no rational behind it and ultimately there is violation of article 14 as well so because it violates article 21 because it violates article 14 this particular order cannot be sustained is what the lieutenant governor of delhi has spoken about further there are some concerns as well what are these concerns when you look at delhi delhi is surrounded by haryana it is also surrounded by uttar pradesh as well there are couple of people multiple people who come to delhi why because they are in lookout for jobs as well so when they are in lookout for jobs they come to delhi and they also pay their taxes for delhi how can we omit such people from taking the services of delhi is one of the key concerns voiced under this article because they are paying taxes because they are part of delhi they are working in delhi they are paying their taxes in delhi in case we are not able to provide healthcare services to these people it is violating article 14 is one of the other arguments put out by this article it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article kindly remember an entire analysis for the same has been discussed yesterday but these are some of the key important factor which was not discussed now let's look into the next article this article here says wrong priorities India is known as the land of spirituality. Our lives are closely integrated with the temples, churches as well as mosques. As the COVID-19 spread, to prevent the infection, spiritual activities surrounding these places of religion were temporarily suspended by the government of India as well as government of number of states. Now, with the economic activities resumed, the government has also given permission to the places of worship to open up. While this permission has been given, there are a couple of measures taken by the temples, churches as well as mosques in order to reopen their premises. What are some of these measures taken by the temples, churches and mosques? Devotees may be asked to book a particular time slot and a time slot would be given. They would be able to go to the temple, church or the mosque only in that particular time slot. So they have to use the internet, they have to use the application and they would be given a particular time slot and they have to visit this religious place only during that time slot. Then circles have also been painted in all these religious places. So this basically ensures that there is social distancing and physical distance between those people who are entering the religious premises. Then there have been thermal screening measures that are also being undertaken with those above the age of 65 and those below the age of 10 having been advised to remain at home. So in spite of thermal screening what they have also requested is those people who are above 65 years and less than 10 because they have less immunity they have advised these people not to come to the religious worship places and at the same time they have also installed pedal based sanitizers as well so that they can maintain physical hygiene at all the entry and the exit points. Now the question is, is it safe? Is it the right decision to open these religious activities? Let's look at some of the arguments. Temples, churches, mosques, all of which are associated with huge numbers. Now, when the country is witnessing a rapid rise in the COVID-19 cases, where number of cases is increasing day in and day after, is it the right time to open these activities? Is the first question that this editorial asks. There are few news reports which also says that that there could be a possibility of community transmission in places like Delhi or in places like Mumbai as well. When there are such reports that are surfacing in the news media, is it the right time to open because in spite of taking all the precautionary measures, a small glitch in, in the management of crowds could prove to be suicidal is the second argument put out by this article. The article further says that in spite of the online registration, e-passes which are being given to the disciples, distance marking and use of personal protection system by the staff, gatherings in these places can get really clumsy and it may go against the principle of infection control. And as a result of this, 
in case when there is minor glitch somewhere in the system this can prove to be disastrous is what this article says that economic activities should not be equated with religious activities economic activities is the need and religious activities is an option economic activities has to be resumed but religious activity can be postponed in the near future economic activities provide the food and the fodder and also resume the economical upscale but when it comes to the religious activities it can also bring about new infection in the near future so what it says is that india needs to draw up its unlock priorities carefully before haphazardly opening up multiple sectors which are optional sectors is what this article says now let's look into the next article this article says flattening the climate curve there are myriad species on this planet blue mother nature continues to take care of them and give life to many species who are living with the principles as set by the nature one species that all other species may dislike is the human beings why because of massive damages inflicted on earth from killing animals to conquering their homes we have been polluting the earth and what is the result increase in the greenhouse gases increase in the carbon dioxide levels increase in the temperature and ultimately bringing massive changes resulting in what is called as the climate change the changes have intensified and have also worsened with the impact of the industrial revolution taking the center stage what are we discussing under this article we will focus on increase in the carbon dioxide concentration where we will look at some of the key stats and we will also look at the temperature changes and what are the impacts of climate change first up let's look at the changes with respect to the carbon concentration about 18000 years ago carbon dioxide was little under 200 parts per million and earth was much colder back then about 11500 years ago it reached to about 270 parts per million warmer conditions was prevalent leading to emergence of agriculture when you look at these statistics you also figure out that in case there is any changes there have been somewhat minimal changes changes when it comes to carbon dioxide 270 parts per million or 200 parts per million the changes that we see is about 70 parts per million or in fact it can be scaled up to about 100 parts per million this is for about millions of years but now after the industrial revolution what we have is drastic change with respect to the carbon dioxide concentration they remain steady at close to 280 parts per million up to 300 parts per million for close to 10000 years but now what we see is drastic changes in the carbon dioxide concentration let's look at the numbers in 1960 it was close to about 310 parts per million in the year 1985 it was about 350 parts per million and for the year 2020 what we have it is going up to 410 parts per million and this drastic increase of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is due to the presence of industrial activities burning of the coal burning of the fossil fuels and also because of expansion of the agriculture and deforestation and infliction of pain that human beings have caused to the mother earth thus the levels of co2 in the atmosphere has reached about 410 parts per million for the year 2020 this was last experienced millions of years ago now what we have to focus on is with respect to the temperature for the year 1850 there was considerable increase in temperature but this was not huge in number now when you look at year 1975 again there has been an increase in temperature but then this has given an upward trend where the temperature difference with respect to 1850 is comparatively more and with respect to year 2015 what we have is 1 degree centigrade increase of the global average temperature from the pre industrial era so this 1 degree centigrade increase from the pre industrial level up until 2015 and much changes in the near future what it will have is impact on the environment the 2003 european heat wave killed about 70000 people this is the impact of increasing temperature the amazon fire of 
2019 is an impact of increase in temperature and the bush fires of australia is an impact of increase in temperature one of the important statistics given by climate impact lab of the university of chicago puts out a warning for india last year in the year 2019 it said that average summer temperature would raise by about 4 degrees centigrade for most of the states in india this issue of increase in temperature ultimately times out to what is called as climate change and number of changes that it will be inflicting on the environment when you look at number of changes that it can impact it includes the components of weather like rainfall humidity and wind speed one of the important characteristics of climate change is what we today have which is called as global dimming what is global dimming let's try and understand global dimming is another issue because of the climate change what happens is we are burning the fossil fuels there is increase in the activities of the human beings there is devastation that we have created to the forest areas and ultimately what happens there is increase of the carbon dioxide and there is increase of the aerosols that is present in the atmosphere as we increase the aerosols and the carbon dioxide it creates a layer of cloud in the atmosphere this layer of cloud will prevent all the solar radiation to reach the earth so the solar radiation that is reaching the earth will comparatively be reduced and as a result of which the average temperature reaching the surface of the earth is comparatively lesser so what is global dimming a global warming is a scenario where there is increase in the temperature a global dimming is a scenario where it does not let the short wave radiations of the sun enter the earth surface and as a result the temperature in the near future can also to reduce as well this is what is called as global dimming there could be reduction in the photosynthesis why plants do require all the sunlight for the photosynthesis and ultimately this could also reduce the agricultural activities and the productivity as well climate change has also been inflicting massively on the health as well how does it impact the health the air pollution can also bring bronchitis lung cancer and it can also bring heart attack as well how heart attack our skin is porous in nature when you apply ointment it is sucked by the skin and that is how it is able to relieve the pain in our muscles but when the same air pollution is resting on our skin this can enter the blood cycle and as it enters the blood stream it can also enter the heart and ultimately it can result in heart attack as well so the health impact resulting in lung cancer and heart attacks have also become prominent because of climate change this can also be put into multiple other perspectives like hurricane heat waves and droughts are also the impact of climate change in order to prevent all these activities what we require is reduction in the greenhouse gases reduction in the burning of fossil fuels reduction in the deforestation and ultimately reduction in the economic activities but all the countries the developed and the developing countries are reluctant to comply by these rules why because they feel in case they have to curb the menace of greenhouse gases they have to suspend the economic activity in case they suspend the economic activity this will result in unemployment crisis and at the same time it may also result in inequality in the society but what they forget right now is that the wealthy nations are already spending about 500 billion each year and the global community on a global average is spending about 2.5% of the global gdp because of negative impact on the environment if the same money can be used on a positive connotation we would be able to reduce the greenhouse gases is one such argument then in the year 2009 there was united nations climate conference the richest nations the developed nations all came together they also pledged and promised that they would be giving about 100 billion dollars to the developing countries this money could be used for mitigation of climate change variations but in the year 2017 statistics also reveal that the money they gave was only amounting to 71 billion and this money was not used for climate adaptation 
policies but was only used for mitigation and some of the money was also given in the form of loans as well and not direct dispersal by these developed countries all this means that funding for these developing countries have again failed to reduce the impact of greenhouse gases that is where the covid-19 comes as a blessing in disguise for the environment the world might be suffering economically it might be suffering on a health basis but covid-19 has been a disguise for the environment it has been able to save the climate it has been able to reduce the emissions from the fossil fuels and all this meant that the earth is healing on its own so what the author says is that covid-19 has laid a foundation the same foundation of reducing the greenhouse gases has to be used by the global community the technologists the economists and social scientists must plan for a sustainable planet based on the principles of equity and climate change the global leaders will have to take up the responsibility have to change their mindset and act on the looming climate crisis so that we have the issue of climate change and greenhouse gases address is what this article all about now let's look into some of the preliminary practice questions which of the following pesticides have been used for controlling locust malathion decalorvus fipronil the answer to this is 1 2 and 3 all the three have been used as pesticides to control the menace of locust why have we taken this practice question because of the reference given under this article with reference to skilled workers arrival database for employment support which of the following statements is or correct it is an initiative of ministry of labor it will help the migrant workers find job in the home state which of the statements are correct the answer to this is none why let's look into the explanation it is a joint initiative by ministries of skill development and entrepreneurship civil aviation and external affairs and it is not the ministry of labor what is this initiative all about this is nothing but an initiative where database is created for all those people who are coming from some other country to india the minute they are coming into india all their skill sets will be used and this will be updated on a database and this will also be given to the industrial bodies as well based on their skill set based on the number of years of experience jobs will be provided to those people who are coming from some other country this is what is the initiative of skilled workers arrival database for employment support now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements with respect to q world university rankings iit bombay retains its status as india's top university iit bombay and iisc bangalore are the only two institutions in top 200 which of the above statements are correct the answer to this is one only why it is not only iit bombay and iisc bangalore it also includes iit delhi as well iit delhi is also one among the top 200 colleges now let's look into the next practice question which of the following are the left bank tributaries of krishna bhima ghataprabha musi munneru tungabhadra the answer to this is 1 3 and 4 the other two are the right bank tributaries of krishna why have we taken this practice question because of reference given under this article what are the left bank tributaries bhima musi paleru and munneru the right bank tributaries include koina panchaganga dudganga ghataprabha malaprabha and tungabhadra now let's look into the next practice question with reference to cultural history of medieval india consider the following statement siddhas of tamil region were monotheistic and condemned idolatry lingayats of kannada region questioned the theory of rebirth and rejected the caste hierarchy which of the given statements are correct the answer to this is both 1 and 2 the siddhas of tamil region condemned idolatry and at the same time the lingayats of kannada region questioned the whole idea of rebirth in hinduism and rejected any caste hierarchy that was prevalent at that time during 12th century now let's look into the mains practice question the recent blowout at the oil well in the state of Assam could spell disaster to biodiversity and environment. Comment: Anthropogenic factors are believed to be major contributors in intensifying carbon emissions and climate change. Elaborate. So please write all your answers on the comment section. Have a peer review amongst yourself and also come up with constructive criticism in case of any. In case you have liked our initiative, please do like, tell your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.